It's like something straight out of an Indiana Jones film. In 1941, a German archaeologist named Bruno von Freiburg was assigned the duty of overseeing excavation efforts in Greece. German armed forces were building trenches for artillery units. Members of Freiburg's unit dug up numerous artifacts. Included among the ancient treasures, a jawbone. Another archaeologist took a look at it and deemed it just a monkey bone. The bone got tossed in a basket. Eventually it was transferred to a Greek museum. It was forgotten about for decades. In 1972, another team from Germany visiting the museum examined the jawbone. Based on the fused molars, they declared the fossil to be an ape, not a monkey. A few years later, researchers in Bulgaria discovered a tooth that appeared to have very ape-like features. The dates for the tooth from Bulgaria and the jawbone from Greece matched about 7.2 million years ago. Researchers named the new species Rhacopithecus. The scientists lightheartedly named the species after Byzantine painter El Greco. Also, they gave a hat tip to von Freiburg. In 2017, Professor Madeleine Bohm of the University of Tübingen and a team of researchers released their study on the Greek and Bulgarian specimens, Grecopithecus from the late Miocene in Europe. From the study, the Greek and Bulgarian specimens confirm that European hominids thrived in the late Miocene, seven to six million years ago, and therefore existed in Europe 1.5 million years later than previously thought. Quote, we were surprised by our results as prehumans were previously known only from sub-Saharan Africans. End quote, Jochen Poos, PhD student, University of Tübingen. Quote, scientists have assumed up to now that the first prehumans developed in Eastern Africa. End quote, co-author, Professor David Bagoon, University of Toronto. From the press release, quote, this dating allows us to move the human chimpanzee split into the Mediterranean area, end quote, David Bagoon. Scientists have placed our divergence with our chimpanzee cousins at seven million years ago. Anthropologists, most especially the French, have argued that our last common ancestor was in North Africa. From ScienceDaily.com, researchers have assumed up to now that the lineages diverged five to seven million years ago and that the first pre-humans developed in Africa. A likely contender for the last common ancestor is Sahelanthropus chidensis, discovered in Chad by Michael Brunet's team in 2001. Another contender is Orion tugenensis, fossil bones discovered by the husband and wife team of Martin Pickford and Bridget Sune in 2001. Orion Tugenensis led to Artipithecus, an upright walker at 4.3 million years ago. Artie was discovered by Tim White's team in Ethiopia in 1991. And a very recent study, scientists are stunned. Yahoo News, August 2023, an 8.7 million year old ape skull suggests that humans and ape ancestors may have evolved in Europe, not Africa. Continuing, the discovery suggests that hominids may have first evolved in Europe. The partial skull of an ape called Anadoluvius, found in Turkey, dates back to 8.7 million years ago. Continuing, meanwhile, early hominids, which include humans, the African apes, are not seen in Africa until around 7 million years ago. A new scenario for human history? Professor Bagoon, quote, Our findings suggest that hominids not only evolved in Europe, but spent over 
five million years evolving there and spreading to Eastern Mediterranean before dispersing into Africa. End quote. Bagoon has been advocating an out of Eurasia model for some time. He outlined his theory in his 2015 book, The Real Planet of the Apes. From the Princeton Press 2017, Bagoon draws on the latest astonishing discoveries in the fossil record. He vividly describes how over 10 million years hominoids expanded into Europe. Bagoon believes apes evolved in southern Europe 10 to 8 million years ago and then moved into Africa. Europe at the time had a much more subtropical like climate. Bagoon, quote, our discovery outlines a new scenario for the beginning of human history, end quote. Other animal species besides primates have had similar migration patterns throughout Africa and Eurasia. Researchers such as Bruce Fenton, an associate of Graham Hancock, have suggested out of Eurasia in the past. They have largely been written off as fringe. On October 9th, Bagoon appeared on Evolution Soup. He began by outlining animal migration patterns in the late Miocene. Quote, starting 8 million years ago, we start to see a migration of mammals from eastern Mediterranean into Africa. Continuing, quote, the earliest gazelles, giraffes, things like that, are found in the eastern Mediterranean, and we find them very soon after in northeastern Africa. It would be the same thing with the apes, end quote. Bagoon then states emphatically that, quote, we don't find any great apes in Africa, end quote, between 13.5 to 7 million years ago, quote, until we find Sahelanthropus, a total absence of evidence, end quote. He further explains that at the same time that there is an absence of fossil evidence of great apes in Africa, there are, quote, dozens of sites, end quote, end quote, hundreds of fossils literally, end quote, in Europe. Separate origins for Europeans? With the recent discovery of Anadoluvius in Turkey, a parsimonious timeline begins to emerge. Miocene apes, Dryopithecus 15 to 7 million years ago, Graecopithecus 12 to 6 million years ago, Anadoluvius 9 to 7 million years ago. Dates for Anadoluvius are still very much an open question. The species could have survived till four, even three million years ago. European Apes Timeline Anadoluvius to Homo erectus to Heidelbergensis to Neanderthals, Denisovans, and early modern humans. In the Evolutionary Soup interview, Professor Bagoon acknowledges that, quote, the branching of the tree, some of it might have happened in Europe. We don't know exactly where that branching occurred, end quote. Bagoon, quote, there is some tantalizing evidence on Graecopithecus. It's just about the same age as Sahelanthropus. We need more fossil evidence, end quote. Africans and Eurasians, two entirely separate branches for six million years? You can watch the full interview over at Evolution Soup here at YouTube. And as always, thank you for watching. Hit the like button, pass this video on to others, and make sure to subscribe.